welcome in the previous lecture in of matrices we have studied how to find the eigen values and eigen vectors of a matrices and we have studied many pro and we have solved many problems on that and the basic properties of eigen value equations so in this lecture we are going to do some special kinds of matrices not only real plane but in complex num complex plane also so let me write the name of the matrices and define one by one so first is your symmetric matrix this is your s y m n e symmetric matrix second one is your skew symmetric matrix skew symmetric matrix sometimes it is skew word is also called as anti symmetric matrix so don't be confused about that this is anti symmetric matrix and third is your orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix see i have written three in a particular manner so that i can define them easily symmetric matrix is defined if the a i j that is the i comp comma j i j th component of a matrix if this is equal to a j i means if there is a matrix and if there i j th component is equal to j i component then that matrix is called a symmetric matrix see how suppose there is a matrix and you write it as a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 and a 3 3 this is a 3 x 3 matrix and these all elements are real all elements are real so in symmetric matrix all elements are real i am saying that a i j component are equal to a j i component it means a 1 1 is equal to a 1 1 that is obvious a 1 2 is equal to a 2 1 a 1 3 is equal to a 3 1 it means that this element should equal to this element this element should equal to this element in the same manner A two three. This element should equal to this element. So if you construct a matrix, so in so this matrix will look like if the elements are A B C D and all that. So if I write A B C, then this mat this is the same as B. Let us see. This is an another element E. This is something D. Then this will be C D F. See, I have constructed a matrix in such a way. where these a 1 2 and a 2 1 are same these all are same and this diagonal elements may be different because in a 1 1 is equal to a 2 2 so this is a 3 cross 3 real symmetric matrix where a i j th component of a matrix is equal to the j i th component of the matrix and this operation of doing the j i component is called the transpose it means if a transpose of a matrix is equal to the matrix then that that matrix is called to be symmetric matrix if the transpose of the matrix is the matrix itself then that is a symmetric matrix so this is a definition of the symmetric matrix and what about the eigen values of this so here i am writing that eigen values a r real so of a symmetric matrix all the eigen values are real and we are going to prove it later first let me define all the definitions of these matrices then we will prove one by one okay so in symmetric matrix you have to remember that a transpose is equal to a and eigen values are real so let's go to anti symmetric matrix so i have rewrote it in the that way so in anti symmetric or skew symmetric matrix the definition of the matrix is given by if a i j th component of a matrix is equal to the negative of a j i component of a matrix then that is called the skew symmetric matrix in transpose or matrix notation if we write that matrix a transpose if it equal to minus of a then that is a 
skew symmetric matrix. So let us have a general matrix A in the same manner which we have written A11. So I have written it all down. So in a skew symmetric matrix, see A12 should equal to negative of A21. Okay. A13 should equal to negative of A31 and A32 should equal to negative of A23. Let's think about what happened to A11, A22 and A33. Can I write A11 is equal to minus A11 and I am saying all AIs, AIJ are reals. So A11 and A this equation must be satisfied if it is a skew symmetric matrix. And from this equation, it is satisfies that this equation holds true only when A11 is equal to A22 is equal to A33 and it is equal to 0. If A11, A12, if A11, A22, A33, all the diagonal elements are 0, then only this condition which I have written A11 is equal to minus A11 is satisfied. So in this way, we can see that the skew, her, skew symmetric matrix has all its diagonal elements are 0. So let me reconstruct a matrix this. So if it is an anti-symmetric matrix, then these diagonal elements must be 0. If this is, I am writing D, E, F, then this element be minus D, this is minus E and this is minus F. Okay. So this is a construction of anti-symmetric matrix and the eigenvalues of this, the eigenvalue of a skew symmetric matrix are always 0 or purely imaginary, purely imaginary. So the eigenvalues of the skew symmetric matrix is either they all are 0 or they all are purely imaginary number, they cannot be real, okay, purely imaginary or 0. So this was all about the anti skew symmetric matrix. So before going to an orthogonal matrix, I wish to uh, discuss one thing about symmetric and anti-symmetric matrices and that is number of parameters. How many independent numbers are there in an anti-symmetric and symmetric matrix? So for this, let us say that a is a matrix, there is a general n cross n matrix, these elements are a11, a12 dot dot a1n, a21, a22 dot 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 a2n and so on an1 and this is ann. So this is n cross n general matrix, I, am, I have not defined whether it is a symmetric or anti-symmetric matrix. So let us have a calculation over here ann. See, it has n elements here, n elements here, and n elements here. So the total number of elements is, see, if there is a 2 cross 2 matrix, the total elements is 4. If there is a 3 cross 3 matrix, the total element is 9. If there is a 4 cross 4 matrix, the to total element is 16. So in this, the total elements are, total elements are n square. Now let us have if this A is symmetric matrix, then what happens? Symmetric matrix. If A is a symmetric matrix, then see total number of elements is n square and there are n diagonal elements which do not repeat. See A11 was equal to A11. So I have neglected that n diagonal elements. Now what? Now this n square n are all elements which are non-diagonal. So n square n are these numbers and these numbers. So this and this will constitute you n square minus n. And see this element was equal to this element, this was equal to this element and this was equal to this element. So in this way, the, these are not independent numbers, they are related to each other. So the total number of independent parameters are divided by 2. So this is n n minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so these are the numbers which will have the this type of formation in this upper triangular or lower triangular case. Now there are n diagonal elements also in a symmetric matrix. 
so these are the numbers of matrices which are which are there in this upper triangular or lower triangular and they are independent and plus n independent numbers which are on diagonal so the total number of independent parameters having the symmetric matrix is n n plus 1 by 2 so this this is for symmetric number if there is a 4 cross 4 matrix then there are 4 cross 5 by 2 this is 2 so there are 10 10 independent elements if it was 3 cross 3 matrix then this is 3 into 4 by 2 this is 6 element which we have seen that three diagonals and three upper diagonal elements okay so this was the symmetric matrix let us have the case for anti symmetric matrix what happens there okay so if i have another matrix let us suppose b and this is anti symmetric matrix anti symmetric matrix so you just have to imagine a little bit see there are n square total number of elements and there are zeros n zeros that are the diagonal elements which are zero so i have to subtract minus n so now you are left with suppose suppose this this was the matrix which was an anti symmetric matrix and these all diagonal elements were zero and you have left with upper triangular and lower triangular matrices okay in this may you have seen that this was equal to minus of this this circle was minus of that circle okay so it was not independent parameters so in this way these all are zeros and they are dependent to each other so the total number of in this column the upper triangular matrix and lower triangular matrices are n square minus n so if i divide it by 2 so we will get the one the upper triangular matrices okay and the lower triangular matrix was related to that aij was negative of ajy so that was not independent parameters and diagonal elements are all zero so in anti symmetric matrix the total number of independent parameters are n n minus 1 by 2 this is equal to n n minus 1 by 2 so this was about the symmetric and skew symmetric matrix so let us define the orthogonal matrix the ortho the definition of an orthogonal matrix is if the transpose of an matrix is equal to the inverse of that matrix then that matrix is called to be an orthogonal matrix and this definition can be extended to you know that a inverse a is equal to identity matrix then replacing a inverse by a transpose if a transpose a is equal to a a transpose is equal to identity matrix so that definition is for orthogonal matrix okay so we will discuss the properties of orthogonal matrix later so let me define one property here that determinant of a where a is an orthogonal matrix is either plus 1 or minus 1 so this was a basic definition of an orthogonal matrix see what we have studied the symmetric anti symmetric and orthogonal matrices have the elements in real that are real elements what happens if the uh, elements are complex so that are given a another name skew sorry symmetric matrix is replaced by an hermitian matrix skew symmetric skew symmetric matrix is called an anti hermitian matrix and orthogonal matrices are called as unitary matrices so that transpose operations is defined as a dagger operation so let us see what transpose and dagger really means transformations given that is transpose and one is dagger these are operators transpose and operators in transpose you what you have did you have changed the row by a column and changed the column by a rows see how i am uh, just taking a 3 cross 3 matrix if a b c d e f g h i was a matrix let us say a then a transpose is given by this this row becomes the column so it is a b c the second row becomes second column d e f 
and similarly GHI. So in this way, this is given. The transpose is defined as this way. In dagger, what you do is first you have to change the row by column and then take its complex conjugate. Complex conjugate. And similarly, row or row column by row and take its complex conjugate. So if I have the same matrix A, let us define another matrix B. It is uh, given as, let us say the elements are J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. And these are complex. Okay. So dagger transpose is written as this type T on a matrix dagger is defined as by this symbol. Okay. So B dagger, B dagger is written as first you will transpose the column. So it is J, K, L, M, N, O and P, Q, R. So I have taken the change the row by a column then take it the complex conjugate. So I am just representing this symbol by the complex of these numbers. What I mean is that if any numbers, let us suppose that j is equal to 2 plus 3i because they are complex. When you j star, then j complex conjugate is equal to 2 minus 3i where i is replaced by minus i. So in dagger operation, first you have to take the transpose and then it's complex conjugate. Okay. So in the next lecture, uh, I will be using this word dagger and this transpose because in the next lecture, we will be dealing Hermitian anti Hermitian matrices. So there will, there you will know what I'm using the dagger means that is transpose and complex conjugate. Okay. So this was all about these three matrices and we will discuss these properties later. So let me define one by one. Okay, in the next lecture, we will see Hermitian and if you have not subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel for latest update and your queries are always welcome. Mail is given in the description box and about section of the channel. If you have any query, any doubt, you can feel free to mail. I will reply in my leisure time. So thank you and share it to your friends. All the best.